Hello PTE students, this is Nazhat and in today's video we are going to be discussing the reorder paragraph topic from the reading section of the PTE. Now this topic contributes to 7% of your reading scores, okay, which makes it a very important topic for people that will be aiming for 79 plus. Okay, it's a fairly important topic for those people. And if your target score is something below that, if it's 50 or 65, it's not as important, but still it's good to try your best and grab some points here. Okay, then if you do well in this topic, it might help you to get closer to your target score or to cross your target score. Okay, so let's discuss a little bit about it. What can you expect from the reorder paragraph topic? How are you supposed to answer these types of questions? What is your task? Okay, now in this particular topic, they will give you a few paragraphs, okay? So there will be a passage with different paragraphs. For example, four paragraphs in this passage. Now these paragraphs, the sequence will be changed, okay? They will be jumbled up. The first paragraph will be listed as the third one. The second paragraph will be listed as the fourth one. Okay, so like this, the sequence of the paragraphs is going to be messed up. Okay, it's going to be jumbled. And your task is to read these paragraphs and try to figure out the correct sequence. Okay, and you have to rearrange them in the correct sequence. The wrong sequence will be given to you. You need to rearrange them into the correct sequence by uh, using a few strategies that we will be discussing in this video. So the task is pretty straightforward. On one side, you will have the jumbled up sequence. You will grab each paragraph from there and drop it in the answer box, okay? And rearrange the sequence. That's your task. So let's get into a discussion about all of the important strategies and facts that you need to know in order to do well in this particular topic, okay? So let's get into it. First, let's talk about some important facts related to the reorder paragraph topic, okay? First important fact is that you are going to receive two to three questions from this topic. Second important fact is that you should not take more than two minutes to solve each question, okay? No more than two minutes because there are other more important topics in the reading section, okay? We don't want to take up five, six minutes to try, uh, try and solve the reorder paragraph questions because then we'll have less time for the more important topics that carry more marks. Okay, now this is kind of like poor planning or poor time management. So in order for sound time management, for in order for you to have enough time to solve all of the more important topics, try to solve each of the reorder paragraph questions within two minutes max. Okay, even when you are practicing, I want you to time yourself. Try to figure out the answer within two minutes maximum. Okay, don't try to spend more time than that on this uh, question. Okay, now the third fact you need to know is that the questions can come in the form of four paragraphs or it can come in the form of five paragraphs as well. Okay, so in four paragraph questions, you will have four paragraphs that are jumbled up. You need to simply rearrange them in the correct sequence. Same thing with five paragraphs. Okay, the exact same logic will apply. You will receive the paragraphs in uh, an incorrect sequence. You just need to rearrange them in the correct sequence. That's all, same exact thing. Now that we know that, let's talk about the marking criteria. This is pretty important, okay? So I want you to listen very carefully so that you can really understand what the marking criteria is, okay? How you are going to be scoring more in this question. Okay, let's say you receive a question that has four paragraphs total, okay? Four paragraphs. The correct sequence of this paragraph is one, two, three, and four. Let's assume that for now. One, two, three, four is the correct sequence of this paragraph. Now, your points, how many points you will receive depends on how many correct pairs of paragraphs you have chosen, okay? Not on the individual paragraph. You will be marked based on 
pairs of paragraphs. So first let's count how many pairs you have. If you receive four paragraphs, you have one and two, that's one paragraph. You have two and three, that's another paragraph. And then you have three and four, that's another. So total three pairs of paragraphs you receive when you receive the question in the form of four paragraphs. Okay, I hope that's clear. I'll just repeat it one more time. If you receive four paragraphs, you have pairs like this, one and two, two and three, and three and four. Okay, so you have three pairs. Now, if you receive five paragraphs, how many pairs are you going to have? When you receive five paragraphs, you have one and two, two and three, three and four, and four and five. Okay, so you have four paragraphs, or four pairs of paragraphs, sorry. When you receive five paragraphs, you have four pairs like this. So that's exactly. Now let's discuss an example using the four paragraph type of question. Okay, so it'll be a little easier for you to remember. Once again, we have one and two, two and three, three and four. Three pairs of paragraphs, which means this type of question is going to consist of three points because there are three pairs. And you need to get these pairs in the correct sequence, okay? Your marking will not be based on individual paragraphs that you have selected. It will depend on the pairs of paragraph. So let's assume the correct sequence is one, two, three, four, okay? One, two, three, four is the correct sequence. But uh, you have written, let's say, four, two, three, one. That is your answer. So there's a little bit of mistake there, right? You're going to lose some points. So correct sequence is one, two, three, four. You have written four, two, three, one. How is this going to be marked? Let's discuss that. Let's talk about the first pair now. The first pair was supposed to be one, two, right? But you have written four, two. So you will not get pair, uh, marks for this pair. It's incorrect. Next pair was supposed to be two, three. This is correct, okay? So two, three, the pairs, uh, pair is together it, in the correct sequence, so you will get point for this. The third pair was supposed to be three and four, but you have written three and one. So this is also incorrect. You will not get point for it. If you write the answer like this, you are supposed to get one out of three, okay? So I'll repeat it just one more time for you so it's easier for you to catch on. You have four paragraphs. This correct sequence is one, two, three, four. Okay? The pairs are one, two, two, three, and three, four. These are the correct pairs. But you have written four, two, three, one. Okay, you have given the incorrect answer. How is it going to be marked? First pair was supposed to be one and two, but you have written four and two, so you will not get any points for that. Second pair was supposed to be two and three. This you have written correctly, you will get point for it. Next pair was supposed to be three and four, but you have written three and one, so you won't get point for it. Total, your total score here stands at one out of three, because you have gotten out of the three pairs, you have gotten only one of them correct. Okay, if you have given the correct sequence one, two, three, four, you would have gotten a three out of three. So that's how the marking criteria works for reorder paragraph, and the same exact logic applies to when you receive five paragraphs. Okay, you are scored based on the correct pairs. Okay, the sequence of the pairs matters a lot. Now, let's get into the strategy discussion for reorder paragraph. Okay. So here, what you need to remember is that there's no one specific strategy that you can use for any question and it will solve the question for you very easily, okay? It's not that straightforward. What you need to remember is that you should use first and foremost your common sense, okay? Try to read the paragraphs that have been given to you and try to form a story in your head. Okay, try to see that which one sounds natural where, okay, which pairs go together and they simply make sense. That is the first thing that you need to rely on. 
okay so now let's discuss an example here and this will give you a better idea of how to form that story and how to kind of use common sense to figure out at least which one is going to be the first sentence okay or the first paragraph in the question that has been given to you how to identify paragraph one so in this question or that has been given if you can take a look at the options first option option a says eu tried to solve both problems okay that's what it starts out with now the question is which both problems they have not been introduced yet we don't know this is incomplete information so this cannot be the first paragraph right now let's continue option b the european union has two big fish problems okay possibly this could be the first sentence we are shortlisting this there's no incomplete information here. Let's keep reading. Now, option C says that the other is that. That's what it begins with. The other what? That has not been introduced. We don't know that yet, right? So this also cannot be the first sentence. Next, option D says one is that. One of what? Once again, it has not been introduced. So this also cannot be the first sentence. As a result, this is option E. Once again, as a result of what? We don't know because nothing has been introduced, right? So the only option we are left with is option B. The European Union has two big fish problems. Okay, this will be your sentence one. So this is how you just try to use your common sense to figure out which one will be the first paragraph, okay? Which one will go in number one in the correct sequence? Next step you can take after identifying sentence one is ask yourself what, how, or why. Okay, whatever information has been given to you in the very first paragraph, I'll try to ask yourself what is this thing or why did this happen or how did this happen. Okay, and try to see if you find the answer to that question in one of the other options. Okay, so our first uh, sentence, it was the European Union has two big fish problems. Okay, now we're going to ask what these fish problems were. Can we find the answer in one of the options? Let's see. So if you read option D here, it says one is that partly as a result of its failures to manage them properly, its own fisheries can no longer meet European demand. Okay, this is the answer for what? So we have found our second sentence or our second paragraph in this sequence, just like that. So this is one of the problems. So what is our third sentence going to be? It is probably going to be the other problem, right? Because here they have mentioned one of the problems is this. So what is the other problem? Let's see if we can find it. So to find the third sentence here, let's try to look for the other problem. They have mentioned two problems. Okay, we have already discussed one. Let's see what the other problem is if it's in one of the options that have been given. Okay, here on option C, you can see the other is that its government won't confront their fishing lobbies. Okay, this is the other problem that has been mentioned. So this will be sentence three in your sequence. Okay, done. Great. Now, uh, if you take a look at option A, it says that the EU has tried to solve both problems, okay? It has said that it has two fishing problems, okay? This is first problem, this is the second problem. Now they are saying the EU has tried to solve both of these problems, okay? So it's making sense, right? One by one, the information is being revealed. What the problems are has already been revealed. So this should be our next sentence, our fourth sentence in the sequence. So we have identified the fourth sentence, right? Let's see now if what is left. There's only one sentence that is left now, which is the option E, as a result, Senegal's ecosystem, and so on. Okay, that's the only one left, so that is going to be the last sentence in the sequence. So I'll repeat the sequence for you one more time. The correct sequence is B, D, C, A, E. Okay, this is exactly how you try to use your common sense to try to figure out what, how the story is being built. Okay, without giving one information, the other thing cannot be talked about like that. Okay, so try to use your common sense, try to figure out uh, how or like 
it sounds more natural right which of the pairs it feels like one goes after another because that's what we're trying to do we're trying to figure out which ones the correct pairs are because that is what is going to give us our marks right so now let's talk about how to successfully create the correct pairs of paragraphs okay so in the beginning when we were discussing the marking criteria i mentioned that the pairs that you are selecting they need to be correct in the correct sequence okay so one and two is a pair that pair needs to stay together for you to get one point that's very important so here we're not going to learn about how to figure out which one is the first sentence, which is the second, third, like that. Okay, we're just going to try to find out which two paragraphs are the pairs. Okay, we want to know which two paragraphs are the pairs. And here there are five ways to figure that out. Okay, to figure out which paragraphs are pairs. There are five ways in which we can figure out which paragraphs are pairs. Okay, starting out with the first one, it's called the common word approach. In the common word approach, we try to uh, look out for any common words among the options that have been given to us, among all of the paragraphs, right? And once we find the common words in two paragraphs, we can know that, okay, this is a pair. This will go together. And after that, once we have figured it out, we will try to figure out the sequence. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example. If you read the example here, let's try to find out the common words. Notice the option B and the option D here. There are two common words in them. First one is the word structures. Okay, so the word structures has been used in both B and D. That's a common word. Also, the word system has been used in both B and D, all right? So done. We have figured out that B and D is going to be a pair, okay? It's going to be together. Now we need to find out which one will come before the other. So let's read it and try to figure that out, okay? So option B says, structures built with this system could be produced faster and less expensively. Structures built with this system which system are they talking about okay we don't have any information about this system yet it has not been introduced we don't know what it is so this is what we're getting from b now let, let's read option d mit researchers have developed a system that can 3d print the basic structure of an entire building okay now in option d they have introduced the system for the very first time and they have told us what type of system it is. They have said that it's a system that can 3D print the basic structure of a building. That is what this system does, okay? So surely D will come before B, right? First, you need to introduce something. Only then you can uh, talk more about it, give more information or details about it. So B and D is going to be a pair. And the sequence is going to be first D and then B. Done. We have found the pair and we have also figured out the sequence. So this is how you use the common word approach. Now let's say you have used the common word approach and you have found the pair, but you are having some trouble trying to figure out the sequence of this pair, okay? And in this case, there is something, uh, a very simple rule that you can follow, okay? This is called the article rule. After finding out the common words and figuring out which two paragraphs are going to be the pair, look out for the article that comes before these common words, okay? So there is, uh, there are three types of articles that you need to remember. The first one is a or an, that is the first one. The second one is the article the. The third one is article this or that. Okay, this is the sequence. Okay, a or, or, or an, the, and then this or that. These are the three articles that you need to remember exactly in that sequence. Okay, so how are you going to use them? After you find the common word, try to notice the article that comes before that word. Okay, if before that word the article is a or an, it means that is a first priority. Okay, that will be the first one in the sequence, in the pair that has been given to us. So if you take a look at this very same example, here it says MIT researchers have developed a system, right? 
So a is our first priority. And if there is an a before that common word, we know that this will go first in that, uh, in that pair. Okay, this, in the sequence, this will be number one. After that, we are going to check for if, there, if the same common word is used somewhere else with uh, a the before it. Okay, does it say the system anywhere in our example given? No, it does not. We don't have an option like that here. Okay, so not always you will have this article the. So in that case, you can skip that and move on to the third priority, which is the articles this or that. Okay, now let's check the options. If there is any option that is saying this article or this system or that system let's see so option b is saying that right that structures built with this system could be produced faster okay so we have found it first we will look for the articles a uh, or an before the common word then we will look for the article the before the common word if we cannot find the then we will look for the article this or that before the common word and this will help us to figure out the sequence okay so that's how you use the common word approach the second approach that you can use to try to figure out the pairs is the zigzag approach okay now how are you going to use this what you need to remember for the zigzag approach is that the object of the first paragraph will become the subject of the next paragraph okay now let's say you can't really um, identify which one is the object which one is the subject that's also perfectly fine okay there's a very easy way to do this and for this you just need to notice the words that are in the beginning of the paragraph and the words that are at the end of the paragraph okay and try to find that common word for this what you're going to do is try to find some sort of common word in two paragraphs okay let's say you have found the common word in two paragraphs here we have an example on the screen let's see which ones are the common words if you read the option a you can see it says heart attack is caused by sudden blockage of coronary artery by a blood clot okay so what is the ending words here blood clot right now can we find these same words in the beginning part of any other paragraph that has been given to us let's check if you read option b it says when a clot is formed it will stay in the blood vessels and so on okay so we have found our pair in option a the of uh, the paragraph it ends with the word blood clot now we have found another paragraph where the paragraph begins uh, or in the very beginning part of that paragraph we have the word clot okay so we have found our pair the same word is in the ending of one paragraph and in the beginning of another paragraph this is our pair so always the sequence is going to be like this in whichever paragraph that common word is at the very end that will come first and after that we will have the paragraph that has that same common word in the beginning part okay so our sequence here when we use the zigzag approach is going to be a b okay it's going to be heart attack is caused by sudden blockage of coronary artery by a blood clot when a clot is formed it will stay in the blood vessel and so on okay so this is how you find out the pair and also the sequence using the zigzag rule pretty simple right now let's move on to the third rule that we can use. For the next approach, the third approach that you can use in order to figure out the pair and also the sequence is the pronoun rule. Okay, so what does the pronoun rule say? According to the pronoun rule, always first the name of the person is going to be mentioned. The full name of the person is going to be mentioned. Okay. And only then they will refer to the person with their only their first name okay first full name and then only their first name and then after that they can refer to that person using any pronouns he she him her etc okay so this is how we try to figure out the sequence now in the let's take a look at the example we have in our hand let's try to see if there is any names hidden in the options okay 
Now the first option, it says me, an international student from Shanghai, China. Okay, so now this is a name, but only the first name has been mentioned here. Let's keep reading. Option B says mechanical engineering student Ni Tan is spending and so on. Now in option B, the full name has been given. Great. Okay, so the full name is given. It means certainly this will go before all of the others. Okay, so the first name is going to be used first. And after that, we can use the only the first name. Okay, so first full name is going to be used. Only after that first name will be used. So we know that B will go before A. Okay, so mechanical engineering student Ni Tan is spending and so on. After that will be option A. Ni, an international student from Shanghai. Done. After that, we can check if the same person has been referred to using any pronouns. Okay, he, she, him, her, etc. Okay, so let's take a look. Yes, so in options C and D, it says, in option C, it says, now in her third year of study. Okay, so here the pronoun her has been used. So this will come afterwards. Then in option D, it says, there she completed a diploma that enabled her to enter and so on. So in the last two options, they have used pronouns. In the first two options, they have used the person's name. First, always the name is going to be used. The full name is going to be used first, which is why we know in the, uh, the sequence, B will come first always. Okay, so mechanical engineering student Ni Tan, this will be the first in our sequence. Then the second one is going to be the one where they have mentioned only the first name. Okay, Ni, an international student from Shanghai. So our sequence is B and then A. After that, they have used pronouns. So all of the, the C and D, it will come later. Okay, so this is how you decide on the sequence using the pronoun rules. Next approach we can use in order to find out the pairs and their sequence is the full form versus short form approach. Okay, so what can we do according to this approach? What does it say? According to the full form versus short form approach, whenever there is some sort of an abbreviation or short form used in one of the options and you find the same uh, short forms full form in another option, we always know that these two are going to be a pair okay first you will see that they have written the short form okay you have found that somewhere let's talk about the short form a uh, very common short form let's say atm this is an abbreviation we all know about what does atm stand for automated teller machine right so now in the question that you have received suppose one of the options says automated teller machine Okay, the full form it has said and in another one of the options it has said the short form which is ATM only only the letters have been used we know that these two are going to be a pair and the sequence always the full form is going to go before the short form so automated teller machine is going to go before ATM because this is kind of like the introduction of the short form right we have given the information that this is what it stands for. And then we can refer to it using its short form. So always full form first and short form second. Okay, this is how you choose the sequence using the full form versus short form approach. Next approach you can use to find out the pairs is the question and answer approach. Okay, so what are you going to look out for in the question and answer approach? Let's say in one of the options, you have spotted a question, okay? And in another one of the options, the answer to that question has been given. In this case, you can tell that these two are going to be a pair. The question and answer options are going to be a pair. And always and always, the question will come before the answer, right? So there is no answer if there is no question, of course. So question will come first and answer will come second. This is going to be the sequence. Okay, this one is a very straightforward approach, right? Very easy to use, very easy to remember as well. 
And this is the very last strategy or the last approach that we're going to talk about when it comes to finding the pairs and the sequence of the paragraphs that have been given to us. So now that we are done with that discussion, one last thing I would like to add here okay what you need to remember is that sometimes none of these strategies will be applicable okay because there are many different types of questions okay and there is no one set rule that you'll find anywhere that if I use this rule surely I will be able to solve any of the reorder paragraph questions there is no rule like that actually so always you should try to first and foremost depend on whatever feels more natural, okay? You, I'm reading it and is this feeling natural or not? For example, even the question answer rule. If I hadn't said this to you, if I hadn't mentioned this, if you came across a question and then an answer, you would think, right? That of course the question should come before the answer because if there is no question, then if there is also no answer. So you need to first rely on yourself, try to use common sense a little bit that can this piece of information come before the other one? Is this really possible? Is this making sense or not? Does this sound natural when I am reading it one by one? This is the first and foremost thing you need to always depend on. And if you are unable to figure it out by simply relying on instincts or whatever feels more natural, in that case, you can go ahead and try to rely on one of the approaches that we have discussed today, okay? Check whichever one is applicable and use it accordingly. Okay, so that was all of the discussion we had for the important topics or the important facts and strategies related to this topic, the reorder paragraph topic. Okay, we are done with the discussion. Now let's get into a practice session, okay? Let's practice a few questions so you can get a better idea of what to expect from these types of questions or from this topic, okay? And you'll be able to see which approaches we are using or how we are trying to figure out what comes before the other. How uh, are we figuring out does this feel natural or not, okay? So let's get into it and practice a few questions. Okay, so let's start off with our practice questions. This is the first one. Let's read through it and try to figure out what the correct sequence of these paragraphs is. Okay, so the first one says, that evening ends with her sudden realization that she is old and lonely. Okay, it says that evening. They're referring to an evening here, but which evening is that? It has not been introduced yet. So we don't really have context here. Moreover, they are saying her sudden realization that she is old and lonely. They've used pronouns here. But this woman that they're referring to, uh, she has not been introduced. We don't have any name. We don't know uh, who this paragraph is talking about. This We only have the pronouns. So definitely this will not be the first paragraph, right? Next, it says, Miss Brill is sad and depressed as she returns home. All right, here they have used the name Miss Brill, which means in this uh, question, we are talking about this woman named Miss Brill. It says she's sad and depressed as she returns home. Where is she returning home from? Uh, once again, that has not been introduced yet. So even though there is a name in this paragraph, this will not be the first paragraph, okay? Let's keep reading. Miss Brill is a regular visitor on Sundays to the Jardin Publique's, the, uh, the public gardens of a small French suburb. Okay, so possibly this could be the first option. Here you have the name, and they have said that this uh, Miss Brill, she is a regular visitor uh, to this one place. Okay, so they have introduced her here. Possibly this could be the first one. Let's keep reading. Next, it says, one Sunday, Ms. Brill puts on her fur and goes to the public gardens as usual. Okay, possibly this could also be the first one. We don't know yet. We'll keep it here. Then it says, she listens to the, bland, she listens to the band playing and enjoys contemplating the world at a great stage upon which actors perform. Once again, here it says, she listens to the band. Okay, uh, pronouns have been used. So this cannot be the first paragraph okay so we're going to choose from our shortlisted ones 
here, the first one that we have shortlisted, it says, Miss Brill is a regular visitor on Sundays to the Jardin Publiques, the public gardens of a small French suburb. One Sunday, Miss Brill puts on her fur and goes to the public gardens as usual. Okay. So here in the first one, they have given a lot more details, right? They've, uh, they've used the person's name, yes, and they've said, said that she is a regular visitor to this one place, okay? This place, in English, it's called a public garden, and in French, it's called a jardin public, of a, smell, of a small French suburb, okay? So they've given a lot more details about this place in the very first one compared to the second. Okay, so definitely this is going to be our first paragraph. Okay, so this place has been introduced. A lot of details has been given about this. And afterwards, they have started referring to it uh, in short as simply the public gardens. Okay, so this one is going to be our first paragraph. Now, let's see which one is going to be our second paragraph. Okay, so one Sunday, Ms. Brill puts on her fur and goes to the public gardens. Okay, possibly this could be the second one. Then it says that evening ends with her sudden realization that she is old and lonely. Okay, so here uh, in the first one, evenings have not been introduced yet. Okay, like what, which evening they're talking about uh, or anything like that. So this cannot be the second one either. Let's keep reading. Miss Brill is sad and depressed as she returns home. Possibly this could be the second one that she's returning from the public gardens. Then it says she listens to the band playing, enjoys contemplating the world as a great stage upon which actors perform. Okay, now this one. In the very first paragraph, they introduced the person. Her name is Miss Brill. They said that she goes to this one place uh, regularly. And now here they are talking about what she does in this place. Okay, she listens to the band playing, etc. So most likely this is going to be the second paragraph. Okay, so Miss Brill is a regular visitor on Sundays to the public gardens. She listens to the band playing and enjoys contemplating the world and so on. Okay, so she goes to this place and this is what she does. Next, let's keep reading uh, to find our third paragraph. Miss Brill is sad and depressed as she returns home. Okay, maybe this could be the third one. We're not sure yet. One Sunday, Ms. Brill puts on her fur and goes to the public gardens as usual. That evening ends with her sudden realization. Once again, this evening has not been introduced yet, so it's not going to be the third one here. It's going to be one of these two. So she goes to this place. She This is what she does. She listens to the band playing. And then we can say that one Sunday, she puts on her fur and goes to the public gardens as usual. Okay? This makes sense in this sequence because they're saying this woman, she's a regular visitor to this place. When she goes there, she listens to the band playing. So one Sunday, she puts on her fur, as in her fur coat, and she goes to this place. Okay, So this is sounding very natural when we say it, and it makes sense. The sequence, it's building a story, right? So this is what makes sense and sounds the most natural. So probably this is going to be the third paragraph. Okay, so one Sunday she puts on her fur, goes to the public gardens as usual. So she has gone to the public gardens. Next, that evening ends with her sudden realization. All right, she goes to this place on Sunday. And for some reason, that evening ends with her sudden realization that she is old and lonely and a realization brought to her by a conversation she overhears a comment on her unwelcome presence in their vicinity. Last says, Miss Brill is sad and depressed as she returns home. So she goes to this place and she hears a comment that was very unwelcoming towards her and that makes her very sad. So she returns home sad and depressed. Okay. So when you read this all together, this sequence is really making sense. Right. So uh, this is the sequence that we have chosen. Let's go ahead and submit, see what we get. Okay, yeah, so four out of four for this one. This was the correct sequence, three, five, four, one, two. Okay, so this is how you solve the order paragraph questions. Now let's try out one more question. Let's practice. Okay, now let's move on to our second practice question. 
let's start reading. First paragraph here, it says, the World Mental Health Day started by uh, the World Federation for Mental Health first took place on 10th October, 1992. Okay. So we're gonna be um, reading paragraphs about World Mental Health Day. So let's keep reading. For a brief definition from the World Health Organization, World Mental Health Day uh, aims to raise awareness of mental health issues around the world and to mobilize efforts in support of mental health. Okay, uh, possibly uh, either of these two could be the first paragraph. So next it says this year's theme is make mental health and well-being all for all a global priority. Okay, now this one it says this year's theme is. So theme for what exactly? Okay, so if this is the first paragraph, it doesn't really make sense because at that point, we still don't know what this paragraph or what this entire passage is going to be about. They're saying this year's theme is theme for what exactly? So that has not been introduced, which is why definitely this is not going to be the first paragraph. Let's keep reading. It has been celebrated on this date ever since. So it has been celebrated. What has been celebrated? Once again, we don't know that yet. So definitely this will also not be the first paragraph. So it's going to be one among these two. Okay. First one says World Mental Health Day was started by so-and-so organization and it first took place on so-and-so date. Okay. So this is the very initial um, introduction. Okay. The very initial introduction that uh, there's a day called World Mental Health Day. It was started by World Federation for Mental Health and it first took place on 10th October 1992. So most likely this is going to be the first paragraph because here it says for a brief definition from the World Health Organization, World Mental Health Day aims to raise awareness of mental health issues around the world and to mobilize efforts to support mental health. Okay, so here at first they have introduced whatever it is they're talking about and then they have given some more details about it. So most likely this is going to be the first paragraph. We're going to keep it here. So at the very end of this paragraph, they're talking about a date. First uh, took place on 10th October, 1992. Now let's read the other paragraphs and see if there are any others that are also talking about a date. Okay, so maybe uh, this paragraph will be continued onto that paragraph. Okay, here we have one at the very end. It has been celebrated on this date ever since. Okay, probably this is going to be the second paragraph because here they are talking about the date at the very end. And it sounds very natural when you say that um, so-and-so day, it first took place on 10th October, and it has been celebrated on this date ever since. Sounds very natural, right? So most likely this is going to be the second paragraph. Okay. Then it says for a brief definition from the uh, World Health Organization, World Mental Health Day aims to raise awareness for mental health and so on. So they're giving you some more details about this uh, World Mental Health Day. Okay, uh, They're telling you about the definition and what is the purpose of this day. So this part, it cannot be at the very end because right after the introduction, you should uh, they usually give you some more details about it. Right? So probably this is going to be the third paragraph. Last one, it says, this year's theme is make mental health and well-being for all a global priority. Okay, so definitely the definition and the um, details about this topic that they're talking about will come before this, this year's theme is uh, make mental health and well-being uh, for all a global priority. Okay, so the definition and the details, it cannot go at the very end simply because it sounds unnatural. Okay, that's really the main thing that we look out for, which paragraph is sounds most suitable at which place. Okay, we need for it to sound very natural when we read the whole thing. Okay, so this is the sequence that we have decided on. Let's submit it. Yeah, so I've received a three out of three for this one. All of them were correct. So this is how you solve questions like these. Now let's move on to the next question, the third one for today. Okay, now let's resume uh, our practice questions. Let's read this one now, okay? 
So first here it says, however, if lobsters are capable of feeling pain, these cooking methods uh, raise ethical questions for chefs and lobster eaters alike. So however, so what does the word however mean? It basically means but, right? And you cannot start off a passage using but. It doesn't really make sense. Moreover, here they have said these cooking methods raise ethical questions. Now, which cooking methods are they talking about? Once again, that has not been introduced yet. So definitely this one is not going to be the first paragraph. So let's keep reading. Next, it says, this cooking technique and others, such as storing the live lobster on ice, is used to improve human's dining experience. Once again, it's saying this cooking method. Which cooking method? Not been introduced yet. This cannot be the first one. Next, it says the traditional method for cooking a lobster, boiling it alive, raises the question of whether or not lobsters feel pain. Okay, possibly this can be the first paragraph. Here, they have... Uh, introduced this cooking method that they were talking about, the traditional cooking method, which is boiling it alive, okay? And it raises a question of whether or not the lobsters feel pain. Possibly this can be the first one. Let's keep reading. Now, a device called Crusta Stun has been invented to, ele to electrocute a lobster, rendering it unconscious in less than half a second, after which it can be cut apart or boiled, okay? So this one, most likely it's not going to be the first paragraph just because this raising a, a question of whether or not lobsters feel pain. Okay, this has been introduced for the first time in this paragraph that's number three over here. Okay, so they have introduced the cooking method for the first time, which is the traditional cooking method, boiling it alive. And they're saying that this method, it raises a question of whether the lobsters feel pain or not. Okay, so there is some sort of an ethical question here. And which is why this should definitely come before, because this is the problem that has been introduced, okay? That there is an ethical dilemma or an ethical issue here. And after that, only after you have introduced the problem, you can introduce the solution, right? Here is the solution. This is this device called Krusta Stun, okay? So definitely this will not be the first one. It's going to be this one. So the traditional method for cooking a lobster, boiling it alive, raises the question of whether or not lobsters feel pain. Now, let's think about all of the rules or strategies that we have discussed. If you recall the article rule, what did it say? It said that you should look out for the articles right before the common words in the paragraphs. Okay, so here it says method for cooking. Okay method for cooking, and here it says cooking technique. The words are not exactly the same, but the meaning is completely the same, right? Method for cooking, cooking technique means exactly the same thing. And what was the order of uh, order of importance? Okay, first, we were told to look out for the articles a uh or an before that common word. Then we are supposed to look out for the article the, then we are supposed to look out for the article this or that. Now, cooking technique or method for cooking, there is no option here that says a method for cooking or like a cooking technique, anything like that. So after that, we are supposed to look out for the, we have found the, the traditional method for cooking. The third one in the sequence is this or that. And here we have the word this this cooking technique. So definitely this is going to be a pair. The method for cooking and this cooking technique. This is going to be a pair. So we have found our, our paragraph one and two. So let's try to figure out the third one. However, if lobsters are capable of feeling pain, these cooking methods raise ethical questions for chefs and lobster eaters alike. Okay, so here they are talking about the issue here that if the lobsters are actually feeling pain, there is an ethical issue. This is also, once again, a part of the problem, problem introduction. So maybe this is going to be the third one. Let's read this just to be sure. It says, now a device called Crusta Stun has been invented uh, that to electrocute a lobster, rendering it unconscious in less than half a second, after which it can be cut apart or boiled. So this is the solution to the problem that they are discussing here. Right. First, definitely there should be an introduction of the problem. Only after that, we can discuss the solution. 
So this is the sequence that we have decided. Three, two, one, four. Okay. When we read it all together, uh, it should make sense, right? So if you read it, it seems like the continuity of the story is maintained and it's really making sense. Okay, so let's submit this. Yeah, so this is a three out of three for this one. This was the correct sequence for this question. Now let's move on to our next practice question, fourth one for today. Okay, now let's move on to our next practice question. Okay, let's start reading, try to figure out the correct sequence. First, it says they can be either very cold or very hot. All the most of them are found in subtropical areas. Okay, what is what does the they refer to? It has not been introduced yet. So this cannot be the first paragraph. Let's keep reading. Any vegetation and wildlife living in a desert uh, must have special adaptations for surviving in a dry environment. Okay. So here, for the first time, we are reading about vegetation and wildlife in a desert. Okay, so it's possible this could be the first paragraph, but let's read all of them first to just to make sure. Okay, but we have shortlisted this one. All right. Next, it says deserts are dry areas where rainfall is less than 50 centimeters or 20 inches per year. Okay, possibly this could be the first one as well. They are talking about deserts here. It has been introduced for the first time, and it's talking about the fact that deserts are very dry areas. So let's read the last one. It says, because of their extreme conditions, there is not much biodiversity found in deserts. Now, a passage, uh, it will not begin straight up with uh, the word because, okay? Because it sounds in unnatural. Passages don't uh, start out with the word because. So definitely, this will also not be the first paragraph. Now, we need to choose between the shortlisted one. It's, it's either this two or three. It's one of these will go first. Which one is it going to be? Let's read it again to just make sure. Does any vegetation and wildlife living in a desert must have special adaptations for surviving a dry environment? Deserts are dry areas where rainfall is less than 50 centimeters per year. Okay. So before saying this, that any vegetation or, or wildlife, what do they need to survive in a dry environment of a desert? Before that, we need to introduce this desert itself, right? So here they have introduced the desert and they have said that it's a very dry area because there is very little rainfall there. So this is going to be our first paragraph. Okay. Now let's keep reading to find out our second paragraph. Okay, so uh, this one, any vegetation and wildlife, this one, it could be the second paragraph, possibly. We'll keep it shortlisted for now. They can be either very cold or very hot, although most of them are found in subtropical areas. Okay, so they, what does this they refer to? They can be very cold or very hot. Here, once again, they are referring to the same deserts in from the first paragraph. Okay, so they're giving a little more information that deserts can be very hot or it can be also very cold. So most likely, this is going to be the second paragraph. Okay, now, once again, any vegetation and wildlife in a desert uh, must have special adaptations. Uh, this is one. And then because of their extreme condition, there is not much biodiversity found in the in deserts. Okay, so here first, they are talking about deserts being either very cold or very hot. What does that mean? It means that there is an extreme weather condition, okay, an extreme climate. Uh, wherever this desert is, which is mentioned in this paragraph. Because of their extreme condition, there is not much biodiversity found in deserts. They're very cold or very hot. And because they're very cold and very hot, you can't find a lot of biodiversity in deserts. So most likely this is going to be the third paragraph because it makes sense. The continuation from this paragraph to this it's very sensible, right? They are talking about one thing here. They've continued talking about that same thing. Last one, this is the only one that's left. So most likely it's going to be the last paragraph. Okay. So once again, we will read the whole thing to just try to make sure that it makes sense. And we the story that has been created through the rearranging of the paragraphs 
uh, it's sensible. Okay, we are not suddenly getting some sort of information that was not previously introduced. There is no confusion in trying to understand what this passage, is, what message this passage is conveying. Okay, so this makes sense. So let's submit this. Yeah, okay. So this was the correct sequence. You see, I've received a three out of three because there were three pairs here. Okay. So this is how you solve the questions. Now let's move on to the last practice question for today's video, the fifth one for today. All right, so let's read the very first option here. It says, for instance, LinkedIn is one of those websites that will make your search easier. So what, for instance, it refers to for example, right? Now a passage is never going to begin with for instance or for example, because we still don't know what is this an example of. Okay, what, what are they giving us an example of? We don't know that yet, which is why a passage will never begin with these words. Definitely, this is not going to be the first paragraph. So let's keep reading to find the first one. Okay, it says, traditional ways of finding an internship are, the, are not the only way to do it. Okay, this possibly could be the first paragraph. We're not sure yet, so we'll keep it here for now. Okay, next it says, this best known job hunting website covers internships too. You just need to apply the appropriate search filter. This best known job hunting website, which website are they referring to? Uh, it needs an introduction first before we start referring to as this or that, right? So definitely um, this is not going to be the first paragraph. We don't know which website they're talking about yet. Last one, it says, in our digital world, looking for internships online brings just as satisfactory results as networking and calling companies. So this possibly, it could be the first paragraph. So we have shortlisted two of them. Let's try to figure out which one actually is the first one. Okay, let's read it again. First, it says traditional ways of finding an internship are the, not, the only way of, um, the, not the only way to do it. And then it says in our digital wor world, looking for internships online brings just as satisfactory results. So first and foremost, uh, they are introducing uh, the topic here that the traditional way of finding an internship is actually not the only way to do it. So it means there are other ways. What is this other way? It says in our digital world, looking for internships online brings just as satisfactory results. So this is the other way that they're talking about, bring uh, applying for internships online. Okay, so this one is going to be the first paragraph because here it starts off by saying that uh, traditional way is not the only way. And after that, they're saying there is another way, which is applying online. So when you say it together, it really makes sense, right? They're saying there is not one way, there is another way, and then they introduced the un another way. So this is making sense, which means this should probably be a pair. Okay? So we have found our first and second uh, paragraphs. Okay, so here they have said that in our digital world, we can look for internships online and it is just as satisfactory. Let's keep reading. Then it says, for instance, LinkedIn is one of those websites that will make your search easier. Okay, it's possible this could be the third one uh, because here they are talking about applying for internships online. And LinkedIn uh, is a website. It also has an app where you can easily apply for jobs online. Right, so this is making sense that they have given an example uh, of a place or a platform where you can apply for jobs or internships online. Okay, so this makes sense. Possibly this is the third one. Let's read uh, just to make sure. Okay, then it says this best known job hunting website covers internships too. You just need to apply the appropriate search filter. Okay, it says this best known job hunting website. So LinkedIn we know is a job hunting website. And here it has been introduced for the first time in this paragraph. They have taken the name LinkedIn. After that, they have continued talking about it. They have said this best known job hunting website. They're referring to LinkedIn, which means that this paragraph should definitely come before this one, right? So if we read it, it makes sense. So let's uh, submit this, see what we get. So three out of three for this one as well. This one was the correct sequence. 
So it's important to read it out loud just to make sure that it makes sense, okay? That's really the main thing that we're trying to do, okay? Uh, so the answer is coherent. And if we were to, supposed to, suppose we read this passage somewhere, it actually makes sense and it's not confusing. We don't feel like suddenly a piece of information has been given to us without any context or without any introduction. Okay, so that's what we really try to do. We just try to use our common sense to uh, create a story with the passages or sorry, the paragraphs that we've been given. Okay, so this is the correct way to do this. So we have discussed all of the important facts and strategies that you need to know in order to answer questions from this topic. Please remember to practice some questions on your own because this will give you an even better idea of what to expect on the day of the exam. So this brings us to the very end of our video. Thank you all for watching. Good luck for your BTE preparation and take care.